Numbers, chapter 21. And when King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel, and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. And they journeyed from Mount Hor, by the way of the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward, and pitched in Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth, and pitched at Ijeabarim, in the wilderness which is before Moab toward the sunrising. From thence they removed and pitched in the valley of Zered. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coasts of the Amorites. For Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea, and in the brooks of Arnon, and at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar, and lieth upon the border of Moab. And from thence they went to Beer. That is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes digged the well, the nobles of the people digged it by the direction of the lawgiver with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matana, and from Matana to Nahaliel, and from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley that is in the country of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looketh toward Jeshimon. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we be past thy borders. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword, and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok, even unto the children of Ammon. For the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities. And Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon and in all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It hath consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab! Thou art undone, O people of Chemosh! He hath given his sons that escaped and his daughters into captivity unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Heshbon is perished even unto Dibon, and we have laid them waste even unto Nopha, which reacheth unto Medabub. Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. And Moses sent to spy out Jeazer, and they took the villages thereof, and drove out the Amorites that were there. 
and they turned and went up by the way of Bashan. And Og the king of Bashan went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle at Edrei. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all his people and his land. And thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So they smote him and his sons and all his people until there was none left him alive, and they possessed his land. Numbers chapter 22 And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lunch here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam, and said to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. 
where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Balaam! Am I not thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times, and lest she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath Huzath. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam, and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. Numbers chapter 23. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me. And whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable, and said, Balak, the king of Moab, hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, what hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, 
Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and curse me them from thence. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering, while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, Neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered, and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do. And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God, that thou mayest curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor, that looketh toward Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Numbers chapter 24 and when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel! As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of line aloes, which the Lord hath planted and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies, and shall break their bones, and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, 
and cursed is he that curseth thee. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come, therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, He hath said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until Asher shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Kittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up, and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. Numbers chapter 25 And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the angel of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. 
Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Kozbi, the daughter of Zur. He was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosbi, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. Numbers chapter 26 And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from twenty years old and upward throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eleazar the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, the eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanak, of whom cometh the family of the Hanakites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites, and they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel and Dathan and Abiram. That is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron and the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up together with Korah, when that company died. What time the fire devoured two hundred and fifty men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. The sons of Simeon after their families. Of Nemuel the family of the Nemuelites, of Jamin, the family of the Jamanites, of Jachin, the family of the Jachinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarites, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulites. These are the families of the Simeonites, twenty and two thousand and two hundred. The children of Gad after their families, of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shunai, the family of the Shunites, of Oznai, the family of the Oznites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arad, the family of the Aradites, of Arali, the family of the Aralites. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, forty thousand and five hundred. The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Pharez, the family of the Pharzites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Pharez were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamel, the family of the Hamelites. These are the families of Judah according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Issachar after their families, of Tola, the family of the Tolaites, of Pua, the family of the Punites, of Jashub, the family of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun after their families, of Sirid, the family of the Sardites, of Elam, the family of the Elamites, of Jaleel, the family of the Jalielites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore thousand and five hundred. The sons of Joseph after their families were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Maker, the family of the Makerites, and Maker begat Gilead, of Gilead come the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Helak, the family of the Helakites. 
and of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites, and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, and of Shemida, the family of the Shemidaites, and of Hefer, the family of the Heferites. And Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters. And the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala and Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirzah. These are the families of Manasseh, and those that were numbered of them, fifty and two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families. Of Shuthala, the family of the Shuthalites. Of Beker, the family of the Bakrites. Of Tehan, the family of the Tehanites. And these are the sons of Shuthala. Of Eran, the family of the Eranites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. These are the sons of Joseph after their families. The sons of Benjamin after their families. Of Bela, the family of the Belaites. Of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites. Of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites. Of Shufam, the family of the Shufamites. Of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman. Of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the sons of Dan after their families, of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuhamites, according to those that were numbered of them, were threescore and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Asher after their families, of Jimna, the family of the Jimnites, of Jesuai, the family of the Jesuites, of Bariah, the family of the Bariites, of the sons of Bariah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the family of the Malkielites. And the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them, who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali after their families, of Jaziel, the family of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Shillam, the family of the Shillamites. These are the families of Naphtali according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were the numbered of the children of Israel, six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lots, according to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Levites after their families, of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Mirari, the family of the Mirarites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korathites, and Kohath begat Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. These are they that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered, when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, 
they shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. Numbers chapter 27 Then came the daughters of Zelophehad the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount Abarim, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. That is the water of Meribah in Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hand upon him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Numbers chapter 28 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet savor unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which ye shall offer unto the Lord two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even. And a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hin of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. 
and the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hin for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at even, as the meat offering of the morning, and as the drink offering thereof. Thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your months ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one bullock and two-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram, and a several-tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offerings shall be half an hin of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of an hin unto a ram, and a fourth part of an hin unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three-tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram. A several-tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily, throughout the seven days, the meat of the sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto the Lord. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Also, in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals unto one bullock, two-tenth deals unto one ram, a several-tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their drink offerings." Numbers, chapter 29. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, 
three-tenth deals for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram, and one-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Beside the burnt offering of the month, and his meat offering, and the daily burnt offering, and his meat offering, and their drink offerings, according unto their manner, for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month an holy convocation. And ye shall afflict your souls, ye shall not do any work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savor, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year, they shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals to a bullock, and two-tenth deals to one ram, a several-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, Beside the sin offering of atonement, and the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering of it, and their drink offerings. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work, and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year. They shall be without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three-tenth deals unto every bullock of the thirteen bullocks. Two-tenth deals to each ram of the two rams. And a several-tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteen lambs. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the second day ye shall offer twelve young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offering and their drink offering for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering thereof, and their drink offerings. And on the third day, eleven bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fourth day, ten bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish. Their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside a continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fifth day, nine bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without spot and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the sixth day, eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. On the eighth day ye shall have a solemn assembly. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord, one bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish, their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullock, for the ram, and for the lamb shall be according to their number after the manner. 
and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things shall ye do unto the Lord in your set feasts, beside your vows, and your free will offerings, for your burnt offerings, and for your meat offerings, and for your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. Numbers chapter 30 And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word, he shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows, or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul, shall stand. And the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all an husband when she vowed, or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow, and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows, or concerning the bond of her soul, shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establisheth all her vows, or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirmeth them, because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall any ways make them void after that he hath heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. Numbers chapter 31 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand, throughout all the tribes of Israel, shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments, and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi and Recham, and Zur and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. 
And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones, and took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, under the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor, and there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days. Whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day, and on the seventh day. And purify all your raiment, and all that is made of skins, and all work of goat's hair, and all things made of wood. And Eleazar the priest said unto the men of war which went to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless it shall be purified with the water of separation, and all that abideth not the fire ye shall make go through the water. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean, and afterward ye shall come into the camp. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation. And divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them who went out to battle, and between all the congregation and levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons and of the beeves and of the asses and of the sheep. Take it of their half and give it unto Eleazar the priest for a heave offering of the Lord. And of the children of Israel's half thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons of the beeves, of the asses and of the flocks, of all manner of beasts, and give them unto the Levites which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty, being the rest of the prey which the men of war had caught, was six hundred thousand and seventy thousand and five thousand sheep, and threescore and twelve thousand beeves, and threescore and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all, of women that had not known man by lying with him. And the half, which was the portion of them that went out to the war, was in number three hundred thousand and seven and thirty thousand and five hundred sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was six hundred and threescore and fifteen. And the beeves were thirty and six thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and one. And the persons were sixteen thousand of which the Lord's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moses gave the tribute which was the Lord's heave offering unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. And of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men that warred, now the half that pertained unto the congregation was three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep and thirty and six thousand beeves, and thirty thousand asses, and five hundred and sixteen thousand persons. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one portion of fifty, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Levites, which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses.
and the officers, which were over thousands of the host, the captains of thousands, and the captains of hundreds, came near unto Moses. And they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war which are under our charge, and there lacketh not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord, what every man hath gotten, of jewels, of gold, chains and bracelets, rings, earrings and tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels. And all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord, of the captains of thousands and of the captains of hundreds, was sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil every man for himself. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Numbers chapter 32 Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that, behold, the place was a place for cattle, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest, and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Ataroth and Dibon, and Jazer and Nimrah, and Heshbon and Elielah, and Shebam and Nebo and Bion. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, If we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up unto the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel, that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. And he sware, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord." And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men, to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. For if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all this people. And they came near unto him, and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle, and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel, until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities, because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side Jordan or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side Jordan eastward. And Moses said unto them, If ye will do this thing, if ye will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord, until he hath driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord. Then afterward ye shall return, and be guiltless before the Lord, and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Build you cities for your little ones, and folds for your sheep, and do that which hath proceeded out of your mouth. 
And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commandeth. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. But thy servants will pass over every man armed for war before the Lord to battle, as my Lord saith. So concerning them, Moses commanded Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over Jordan, every man armed to battle before the Lord, and the land shall be subdued before you, then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord hath said unto thy servants, so will we do. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side, Jordan, may be ours. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, and unto half the tribe of Manasseh the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon the king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og king of Bashan, the land with the cities thereof in the coasts, even the cities of the country round about. And the children of Gad built Dibon, and Ataroth, and Aror, and Atroth, Shophan, and Jeazer, and Jogbaha, and Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran, fenced cities, and folds for sheep. And the children of Reuben built Heshbon, and Elaela, and Kirjathaim, and Nebo, and Baalmeon, their names being changed, and Shibma, and gave other names unto the cities which they builded. And the children of Maker the son of Manasseh went to Gilead, and took it, and dispossessed the Amorite which was in it. And Moses gave Gilead unto Maker the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Jair the son of Manasseh went and took the small towns thereof, and called them Havath Jair. And Noba went and took Kenath, and the villages thereof, and called it Noba after his own name. Numbers chapter 33 These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramesses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which the Lord had smitten among them. Upon their gods also the Lord executed judgments. And the children of Israel removed from Ramesses, and pitched in Succoth. And they departed from Succoth, and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham, and turned again unto Pihahirath, which is before Baal Zephon, and they pitched before Migdal. And they departed from before Pihahirath, and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham, and pitched in Marah. And they removed from Marah, and came unto Elam. And in Elam were twelve fountains of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elam, and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea, and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. And they took their journey out of the wilderness of Sin, and encamped in Dophka. And they departed from Dophka, and encamped in Elish. And they removed from Elish, and encamped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Rephidim, and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And they removed from the desert of Sinai, and pitched at Kibroth Hateva. And they departed from Kibroth Hateva, and encamped at Hazeroth. And they departed from Hazeroth, and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma, and pitched at Rimon Perez. And they departed from Rimon Perez, and pitched in Libna. And they removed from Libna, and pitched at Rissa. And they journeyed from Rissa, and pitched in Kihaletha. And they went from Kihaletha, and pitched in Mount Shafer. And they removed from Mount Shafer, and encamped in Harada. And they removed from Harada, and pitched in Makiloth. 
and they removed from Makaloth and encamped at Tehath. And they departed from Tehath and pitched at Terah. And they removed from Terah and pitched in Mithka. And they went from Mithka and pitched in Hashmona. And they departed from Hashmona and encamped at Moseroth. And they departed from Moseroth and pitched in Benajaikon. And they removed from Benajaikon and encamped at Horha Gidgad. And they went from Horha Gidgad and pitched in Jotbatha. And they removed from Jotbatha and encamped at Ebrona. And they departed from Ebrona and encamped at Ezion Gaber. And they removed from Ezion Gaber and pitched in the wilderness of Zin, which is Kadesh. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched in Mount Hor in the edge of the land of Edom. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. And Aaron was an hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. And they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zalmona. And they departed from Zalmona and pitched in Punan. And they departed from Punan and pitched in Oboth. And they departed from Oboth and pitched in Ijiabarim, in the border of Moab. And they departed from Iam and pitched in Dibon Gad. And they removed from Dibon Gad and encamped in Almon Diblatheum. And they removed from Almon Diblatheum and pitched in the mountains of Abiram before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abiram and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. And they pitched by Jordan from Beth Jesimoth, even unto Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell therein. For I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Numbers chapter 34 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin, along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast of the salt sea eastward. And your border shall turn from the south to the ascent of Akrabim, and pass on to Zin. And the going forth thereof shall be from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazar Adar, and pass on to Asmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the river of Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border, and this shall be your north border. From the great sea ye shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Ziphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Hazar Enon. 
this shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazar Enon to Shepham. And the coast shall go down from Shepham to Ribla on the east side of Aen. And the border shall descend, and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Kinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the salt sea. This shall be your land with the coasts thereof round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot, which the Lord commanded to give unto the nine tribes and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on this side Jordan, near Jericho eastward, toward the sunrising. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amihud, of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad the son of Kislon, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Buckai the son of Joglai, the prince of the children of Joseph, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Haniel the son of Ephod, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kemuel the son of Shiftan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elizaphan the son of Parnak, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Issachar, Paltiel the son of Azan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud the son of Shalomai, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedahel the son of Amihud. These are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Numbers chapter 35 And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities, which ye shall give unto the Levites, shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city on the east side two thousand cubits, and on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits. And the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither. And to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel. From them that have many ye shall give many. But from them that have few ye shall give few. Every one shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance which he inheriteth. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. 
Ye shall give three cities on this side Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with an hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred, or hurl at him by laying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he die, and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled. And he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. Numbers chapter 36 and the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near, and spake before Moses, and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad our brother unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. 
And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. For Mala, Tirzah, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho.